Today is my last day in Tampa, heading to Vegas in about two hours. First, I'm just here at IHOP. It's like 11.30 a.m. I haven't had breakfast yet. Getting these for sure. And then I need some kind of protein. So I'm probably actually gonna get, I'm gonna get this, I'm really hungry. I'm gonna get the Simple and Fit vegetable omelet. Here is the uh, breakfast. So white chocolate, raspberry pancakes. And then I got the Simple and Fit veggie omelet with some fruit. Uh, so this is just like egg whites with Swiss cheese inside and then a bunch of veggies on top. This is where I'm finishing off. So I'd say maybe, maybe half, like, I don't know, three eighths, something like that. And the orange juice, how much damage I did. And I'm leaving a little bit of fruit too. Uh, but I definitely eat all the egg whites. But I just eat until I feel roughly full and then I stop wherever I've done. So that happens to be here. <laughs> Part of the reason why I weighed in a little bit heavier this morning is because last night, really late, I ordered room service. Uh, so you're seeing the remains of it here, but yeah, it was a chicken burger and sweet potato fries, and it was like really quite high calorie. Um, so I think I'm a couple pounds heavier today, but I'll just tone it back a little bit now today and be active and eat kind of more normally. But this is our view. You can see the Orleans Arena just straight over here, which is where the Olympia is being hosted. Hold on, focus on my shit. Okay, yeah, so this is the Orleans Arena. This is the room, so it's a little bit lived in right now. Uh, but yeah, so this is the the bed. Oh, and we're staying at the Aria, by the way. You realize you got the double tree, not the Aria. This is my new pre-workout. It's actually just a pump product, but this is uh, this is actually really, really good. I actually recommend this one. This is where Pat is sleeping, and this is the bathroom. I don't know how to turn on the light here, but yeah. Anyway, this is the walk-in shower with the bath. I'm probably not gonna use that. And yeah. Another mirror here, and then this is ah, stupid thing. And then this is the, I guess, I know, toilet room. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much the hotel room. Um, it's pretty sweet. Like uh, everything is controlled by the pad here, so like you can order uh, room service or whatever, and open the drapes. I guess I'm just gonna finish up a bit of work that I had to do on the computer. Then we're gonna go get breakfast, I think, at Denny's because eating breakfast here would probably be ridiculously expensive. But we don't really have, we don't have the weekend planned out really at all. <laughs> uh, so we'll just play it by ear and see how it goes. <laughs> looking breakfast of all time. It's like no, nothing healthy. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys just how much napkins I use here. Um, okay, that's one napkin. That's napkin number two. Number three. Number four. It's still like soaking all the way through. Oh my God, bro. That's number five too. Number five. That's that's napkin number six. Six napkins. The pre-workout situation. Dennis coffee and um, AF uh, pre-workout. So you can see it's like a very like 80s type feel to it here, but I always love trying to get a lot of different machines. We're gonna be hitting a shoulder and arm workout today. Let's get ready to do it. 
Okay, so I'm back to take you guys through this full shoulder and arm workout. What I wanna do here is basically just take you guys through the full workout and then touch on any studies that I think are relevant along the way. We kicked off the workout with an incline barbell bench press and there are a few things that I wanna talk about here. You would have seen in my push day science video if you watched it uh, that I discussed the effect of changing the bench angle on upper pec activation. In this video, I want to address the same question but for deltoid muscle activity. And there are three studies that I want to look into. The first and main one is Barnett et al, 1995, which looked at four different angles, so negative 18 degrees or a decline press, zero degrees or a horizontal press, 40 degrees or incline, then 90 degrees, so a vertical press or military press. And what they found was that delt activation, and this is anterior front delt activation, was the greatest with the incline and vertical press compared to the flat and decline press. And on these movements, the wide grip tended to produce more activation than a narrower grip. And it's also worth noting that there was a trend toward vertical pressing resulting in slightly higher activation than the 40 degree incline. However, when you consider just how much more active both the sternocostal and clavicular heads of the pecs are with the incline press, this movement gives you a little bit more bang for your buck, so to speak. So based on this study, I think that an incline press with roughly a 40 degree angle and a wide grip defined in the study as two times biacromial distance so will give you the highest level of activation for the delts and then unlike the strict vertical press you also get a high level of activation for the pecs. So the other two studies are Trebs et al 2010 which was the one that I discussed at length in the last video but they also found that inclines were better than flat for activating the delts and Lauve et al 2015 found pretty much the same thing. I guess people who've been following my training for a while now probably know that I'm not much of a a minimalist when it comes to my programming. And what I mean by that is, even if I think that the returns will be diminishing, if doing more work will yield slightly more progress for me, then I'm going to want to do that extra work. And of course, this is a simplified version of my view on, on volume, um, but I think that it's in line with my general approach to my current training. So with that said, after the incline press, we moved on to a machine shoulder press. And here I'd like to quickly touch on what the difference is between free weight movements and machine exercises when it comes specifically to delt activation. Now, of course, you can always do both varieties if you like, but not everyone is able to do both or wants to do both or both might not make sense within the context of their program. So I think it is important to know the differences between the two if there are any. So there are three papers that I want to cover here. The first is Schick et al. 2010, where they compared the flat bench press with the Smith machine bench press, and they found no difference in anterior deltoid activation between the two. However, what they were calling medial or lateral delt activation was higher with the free weight exercise compared to the Smith machine, presumably because of an increased stabilization role of the lateral deltoid. The next year in 2011, there was another study done by Sater back in Natal, and they found essentially the same result, no difference between the machine and the free weight press. However, in contrast, uh, a much earlier 1994 paper by McCaw et al. found that delt activity was much higher for a free weight press when compared to a machine press. And I think it's worth noting that this was the only paper of the three that looked at a vertical press as opposed to a horizontal press, which might be important. And then also when 60% of one's 1RM was used, free weights were found to be better insofar as they led to more activation. Um, when 80% of the 1RM was used, there was no difference in activation between the machine and the free weights. So what the author speculated basically was that since the anterior deltoid tends to resist lateral rotation of the humor and the lateral deltoid resists adduction of the humerus, the increased activity in these muscles may reflect their contribution to stabilizing the shoulder. And so to me, while there doesn't seem to be anything particularly special about free weight exercises, except for a potential and small increase due to stabilization demands, I think it makes most sense to use a combination or to simply use what makes most sense for you individually within the context of your entire routine. I personally like to use a combination and I tend to use the free weight movement earlier on in the session when I'm fresh and able to um, exert more force. After that, we did some one-arm dumbbell upright rows. You'll see that I periodically swap these in and out for rope upright rows. And while I find the 
movements to be similar. I do find that I have more degrees of freedom with the dumbbell, and this allows me to shift some of the emphasis away from my traps and external rotators into my side delts, simply just by initiating the movement like I would a lateral raise. And speaking of which, a dumbbell lateral raise was up next, and I think we did these for four sets of 12 to 15 reps, just for some extra side delt volume. And then finally, we did finish off with arms. We did a machine preacher curl and a standing dumbbell curl. Here I want to comment on a 2009 paper by Oliveria et al. which compared biceps activation with the preacher curl and standing curl. And essentially what they found was that these two exercises complement each other quite nicely in that bicep activation was highest for the preacher curl in the bottom third of the movement and then activation dropped off throughout the rest of the range of the motion. Conversely with the standing curl it was the opposite. Activation levels were low during the first third and then they increased throughout the remainder of the range of motion. Yeah, we combined the two of these, uh, got the most biceps activation that we could probably out of two different exercises and then that's going to finish off the workout. So guys, thank you once again for listening to this commentary. Thanks a ton for all of the, the great feedback on these. I really appreciate it and I'm extremely happy to hear that you guys are enjoying them and some of you guys are finding them useful. Uh, I really appreciate all of that feedback, so thank you so much. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the vlog. So we just finished up at the expo. I didn't bother getting any footage today. I'll probably get some tomorrow. We were just there very briefly, but I wanted to show you guys the hotel lobby here real quick. Um, so this is the Aria, and this is when you walk in. This is where I checked in last night. I was really tired, so I didn't film any of that. And then this is like a, I don't know, I guess like a kind of like an art thing, a pumpkin thing in the main lobby. And then over here is the casino area, so I probably won't be using that too much. And yeah, we're just gonna go back up to the room now, and I'm not sure what we're planning for the rest of the night. Probably go get something to eat. Now we're here at lemongrass restaurant so this is like uh, a Thai restaurant and I'm just trying to figure out what, exactly what I'm gonna get here uh, probably gonna either go with the red curry chicken which sounds really good um, or uh, pad thai I don't know this is what I ended up getting it's the chicken pad thai and this actually looks so delicious so yeah can't wait to dig in and eat